That's embarrassing. So the EQA was the basis for curriculum planning for all the districts in the state. And it was a mandatory test. The districts had to take it because they had to base their long-range plan on it in order to get their state money. What did the EQA test? The EQA tested first the 10, then the 12 quality goals of education. When we looked at the EQA, parents thought it was testing reading, writing, self-esteem, citizenship. It tested locus of control, whether you are an internally motivated person or an externally motivated person, whether you stand up against a crowd or whether you go with the flow. And they scored it. There was a right answer to the attitude questions. The right answer was go with the flow. In citizenship, the EQA said it did not test anything in the factual domain. It didn't matter if you knew what the United Nations was. It didn't matter if you knew who the president was or what a president was. Citizenship tested thresholds of behavior. How do I vary reward and punishment to make you do what I want you to do? Sample question. There was an organization called the Midnight Marauders. They went out at midnight and spray painted all over everybody's walls. I would join the group if, A, my best friend were a member of the group. Child could say yes, no, or maybe. The correct answer was yes. I would join the group if all the popular kids were members of the group, yes, no, or maybe. The correct answer was yes. I would join the group if my parents would ground me if they found out. The correct answer was no. You are supposed to avoid punishment, but you are supposed to honor commitments to friends and go with the group. The goal was collectivism. The EQA tested for adaptability to change. What parents were told was, well, you know, our world is constantly changing and we want people who are going to be able to go with that and, and survive that. We don't want rigid people who are, can't cope. Sounds very reasonable. The EQA tested and scored for rapid emotional adjustment to change without protest. That was the state desired response. The EQA just didn't test the attitudes of children. It scored the attitudes of children. It was a criterion reference test. That means there's a right answer and a wrong answer. And I say what it is. The bottom criteria for the EQA was that students would exhibit what the state called a minimum positive attitude. The 11th grade EQA was written, written on a reading level between 5th and 8th grade. The EQA out of over 400 questions, 30 of them were academic, and 385 of them were attitudes. When the district took the EQA, they got back a list from the state of where they fit with other districts in the goal. They had to write their long-range plan in order to change their curriculum to have their children achieve the minimum positive attitude. Well, how did they do that? What did they change? The state said, we'll help you. And they brought in technical assistance, either in person or in what were called resources for improvement packets that the state made available to the districts. Those packets included lists of what were called validated programs. Those are programs from all over the country that had been tested by the federal government and had been proven to change the behaviors and attitudes of children in a specific subgroup. All um, white male children with two parents who make less than $20,000 a year. All black female children in a single parent family who make more than $50,000 a year. They could divide the children up into what were called targeted subgroups based on your race, on gender, on ability level, on education of the parents, on socioeconomic status. And the programs were tested and then declared validated, meaning that they were proven to work to change the behaviors and attitudes of children in that subgroup. And that's what has been happening in Pennsylvania education since the 1960s. Our curriculum has been moving away from academics and into minimum positive attitude since the EQA. And the EQA is still driving the curriculum because districts used it for long range planning up till 1989. Why did they stop? They stopped because a mother down in Washington County named Anita Hoag had a son who took the EQA. He came home and said, Mom, this test was really weird. She said, you must be wrong. I'm going to go down to the school and look. And she went down to the school and she said, I, I want to see the test. And they said, no. And she said, see, I'm the mommy. 
I'm allowed to see the test. And they said, no, you're not. It's a secure test. Nobody's allowed to see it. Big fine if you see it. Mrs. Hogue um, is the type of person that when you say no, she flunked locus of control. You know, made her want to do it more. So she wound up writing to the state and finally got a copy of the test and the scoring, which is how we got it. She filed a complaint with the Federal Department of Education alleging that the EQA was a violation of the Federal Hatch Act, federal law, that it was violating her right to privacy and it was against the psychological testing portion of that law and the federal government agreed with her and said the EQA was a psychological test, it was in violation of law and Pennsylvania had to enter into a consent agreement with the federal government which resulted in policy being issued by our department saying they wouldn't do it anymore. So what did Pennsylvania do with the consent agreement? Well, in 1988, when Mrs. Hoke's complaint began to surface, then Commissioner of Education Donna Wall issued a memo saying, uh, we're going to withdraw the EQA until we incorporate it into the new Pennsylvania assessment system. In 1990, the Pennsylvania assessment system was first piloted. The first assessment was called the Pennsylvania Health Assessment. It says right on it, this is the revision of the EQA. This year, the Pennsylvania Assessment System tested reading, math, and writing. Is it the same test? It has a different name, but their own documents say it's the revision of the EQA. In that 1988 memo, Mrs. Wall says that by 1993, we will have completed the revision process. If you look at the regulations that the state is promulgating right now, it says, by 1993, the state will once again test all the goals. The timetable hasn't been interrupted at all. Initially, the sentence ended there. Now, because of the involvement of parents, it says, and parents have the right, they have to go back through public hearings to do that. Is that a victory? Not really. The, the regulatory process in our state really isn't controlled by the legislature. It's controlled by appointed bureaucrats who really don't care what you think. They sit at the meetings, they follow the letter of the law, they give the time, but your input is not really input. Example, in February of this year, the State Board held a public hearing on the, the student learning outcomes and the regulations. The room was big enough to hold 80 people, 500 showed up. They would not move the room. And we began the meeting with an attorney for the parents saying it would really be helpful to facilitate dialogue and consensus if we could get some really basic questions answered here. And the state board said, we're not here to answer any questions. And he said, okay, I can appreciate that this is a public hearing and this is public comment and you're not here to answer any questions, but parents have been asking these questions now for two years. Where do they go to get the questions answered? And the state board said, that's a matter of public policy how you get your questions answered. And the attorney said, that's great. Could you explain the public policy to all these 500 people so they know what to do to get their questions answered? And the state board said, we're not here to answer any questions. When you go to hearings, they give you a topic for the hearing. So one set of hearings is on the student learning outcomes and one set of hearings is on the goals. Now, if you go in and say, but the whole program is terrible, they say, excuse me, the topic here is this piece of paper. So you have to confine your remarks to this piece of paper. So what happens? Well, in one of the goals, the original was that the personal family and community living that the students will acquire and use the proper attitudes and behaviors necessary for successful personal family and community living. I testified to the Senate, in front of the Senate Education Committee and said, what is a successful family? Two people cannot agree. How are you going to measure the attitudes necessary for it? Their response, they took out the word successful. So in order for parents to make a difference, they need to step outside the regulatory process and look at where do they go in order to drive the cart the way they want it to be driven. You go to the legislature. So in Pennsylvania, we went to the legislature and we asked for a resolution that would ask the Department of Education to slow down long enough for the House of Representatives to at least look at the regulations so that everybody could understand them, so there could be some real input. And we won that debate by a vote of 150 to 47, which is fairly significant. And the Department of Education said, we're doing it anyway. And they are doing it anyway. 
If you got involved now, what they would say to you is, this is a done deal. 